Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. So lately uh, in the news and uh, in conversations with people, the topic of AI has come up a lot. And um, it seems that many people are kind of freaking out that AI is going to take over the world. Um, yeah, so we need to have a little talk <laughs> about the actual status of AI as we uh, as we know it. So, okay, AI is artificial intelligence, and of course everyone knows that this means like essentially a computer that can think and act and is is essentially well, well, what is it? I mean, it's it's like a it's like a computer or a robot that acts like a human or that is human or whatever whatever that means. So, first of all. We have to do a little bit of history. Now I know people don't like history, but bear with me. So in the olden days, there were certain technologies that were just on the horizon, like for example OCR, like optical character recognition, and that's of course where you have like a camera or you have a scanner and you scan a, a, a just you know like a sheet of text, and the computer will actually read the document, right? So the computer sees the characters printed on the page and it can turn them into words and phrases and sentences and everyone was like, oh my god, that's like AI. It's like if a computer can read a piece of paper, it's going to be awesome. So, right, people thought, well, that's going to be AI. And then that technology actually came into being. And at that point, everyone kind of went, oh, well, yeah, we kind of understand how this works and it's not really super awesome. I mean, it is awesome, but it's not really AI. Because it's just like, yeah, it's like, you know, we understood that it's like camera looking, um, looking at white space versus the, the printed black ink dots or whatever, and it, it just, it, be, it, it became less mysterious, right? And we understood that, like, this is not AI. So then the next thing happened, which is, uh, this idea of like self-driving cars, right? Um, and so then it was like, well, geez, you know, if you can have like a bus without a human driver, it's like, dude, it'll be like Arnold Schwarzenegger driving your bus. It'll be like a robot, man, like Terminator, Skynet. And people kind of like freaked out and went like, oh my God, this is gonna be like the end all and be all. It's gonna be AI, man. Now, of course, today we have self-driving cars and when they're not crashing into things, um, they're pretty neat, right? But again, we look at that and we go, yeah, that's not really AI because there are vision systems like cameras and there are different types of sensors and there's a lot of computer processing and you know, computers have become more powerful. We can do digital signal processing much better than we could before. So you can, you know, the computer can read and understand road signs and lane markings and um, most of the time not crash into other objects or people and, you know, that sort of thing. But we look at that today and we go, yeah, that's not really AI either. And uh, this is kind of one of the problems of AI. In fact, it actually has a name. It's called the AI effect, which is essentially exactly as I've just described, that we are always looking towards the future and going, when this happens, that's going to be AI. And then we get there and we're like, nah, that's not AI. Because then we understand the technology and we go, no, nah, that's, that's not really AI. And then the next thing happens, and we're like, we get there, that's going to be AI. No, no, that's not AI. When we get there, it's going to be AI. No, that's not AI. So it's like, well, well what is AI? I mean, how <laughs> the bar is constantly being raised higher and higher, but like we never quite get there. So that's known as the AI effect. That's kind of one of the problems. So some people today say that the algorithms that, say, Google and Facebook and YouTube and all these big websites, the algorithms that they use for uh, deciding what content you see or deciding on search results, that these things are actually AI. And actually, they are, typically we call them uh, machine learning algorithms. And of course, this sounds very, very AI-esque, right? Because it's a machine learning algorithm. It's like the machine is learning like a human does. No, it's actually not. So, okay, machine learning is basically you have a box, right? 
and we'll use YouTube as an example because you're watching this video on YouTube, right? So you have a box, and one of the inputs to that box, this, this machine learning algorithm is the black box, right? One of the inputs is all the content on YouTube. Uh, another input to it is sort of like the preferences of all the users. So for example, I go to look at a video on YouTube and um, I will click on, like say I will watch techie videos more often than I will watch videos on like gardening or something, right? So I'm actually creating inputs to that black box. So you got all the content coming in this side and then you've got my inputs to that algorithm. It knows Scotty likes techie videos but he doesn't like gardening videos. So what it's outputting is it's taking that content and it's filtering it based on my inputs. So when it gives me recommended videos, it's going to show me certain videos, but not others. And then based on what I click, right? If I, if I decide to suddenly start watching gardening videos, it will look at that. That's a new input to the system. And it's kind of a feedback loop and, and the, and the machine learning algorithm will go, whoa, that's weird. How, how come he's watching that garden video? Let's analyze that garden video. Let's look at it and go, oh, blah, blah, blah. ah, but in that garden video, uh, the dude used like a Bluetooth shovel or something. So then it's going to go, okay, don't show Scotty gardening videos unless there's someone in the video using a Bluetooth shovel, right? And, and then, you know, so it, it, and it also takes, it also will change my video recommendations and your video recommendations. If say, you like techie videos, but you don't like gardening videos, it's going to, it's going to take your input and it's going to combine that with my input and it's going to, you know, process it all. And then the videos that it recommends me and the videos that it recommends to you may change based on all that data. In, you know, in the olden days we had like Google search or YouTube search and, and all these things, they were very simple. It was based on like the title text of, of a video or, or content or, the actual description or the keywords or whatever. And it was very, very simple. Now with machine learning algorithms, there's so much data. There are so many like millions and gajillions and trillions of hours of video and, and content and Google search and all this stuff that there's no possible way that like humans can process it. So what the genius engineers did is they came up with these machine learning algorithms. And it's basically like massive giant computers that have just absolute boatloads of data and this machine learning algorithm is essentially sifting through all that data and it is controlled by certain parameters that the human creators and operators, say at YouTube, give to it. So in order for humans to do all this work, it would be they'd need to hire like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people and it would take them millions of people hours and everything and it's like, it's not, it's not feasible. So kind of the problem with these machine learning algorithms though is that um, I've heard people say that like we don't understand how they work that's not actually true we do understand how they work because we design them the problem is is it's not a question of of we don't understand how they work we understand how they work it's just that we don't actually know what they're doing inside because the only input we have it's like you create the system to filter and process all this data and what it's actually doing in its core, like, yeah, that we don't know because it's so incredibly huge and complex uh, that it's like impossible to know and look at all that data because there's just too much of it. That's not necessarily AI. And as I said before, this introduces certain problems because people think, oh, the AI is taking over. Well, not really, because again, we take YouTube as an example. They have a machine learning algorithm, right? Okay, so the YouTube engineers will say, okay, Especially, like, here's an example from the current uh, social slash political climate. YouTube engineers will say, stop showing people video. If, you know, you've got your black box, you've got your content, you've got your inputs from the various users in this feedback loop where it's constantly adjusting its, its, uh, its output, which is, you know, say, recommended content for all YouTube viewers, right? But then the YouTube engineers will say, like, yeah, but tweak the recommendations, tweak the video recommendations, so that you're not going to show anyone any videos that might offend them, right? That's problematic because what that means is that, again, they understand how it works, but they don't know what it's actually doing. So they just kind of tweak these little inputs here and there. They're not actually changing the algorithm. They're just kind of letting it do its thing, but they're changing these inputs and saying, 
don't show Scotty anything that will offend him. Well, how the heck does it know what's going to offend me and, and what's not going to offend me? It's, it has to make certain assumptions, and it's making all those assumptions based on all this data. And so suddenly what can happen is I'm not seeing content that I would actually much rather view because it doesn't actually offend me. It's making conclusions based on other people's inputs, and suddenly it's like, don't show anyone anything that offends them, and I'm not actually being recommended content that's interesting to me. So then I have to go on YouTube, and I have to specifically search for stuff. And then when it sees that I'm starting to watch more of those videos, it goes, ah, oh, okay, so maybe he doesn't find this offensive, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it gets kind of complicated, but you can see how the problem is not really the AI. It's not this algorithm that's the problem. It's the human inputs to the algorithm that are tweaking what it outputs. So, yeah, it's not like, the, uh, as far as anyone knows, it's not that machine learning has become sentient or something. It's still a human problem. So, yeah. But that's not really AI yet. It's, it's just not. It's, it's a very complex algorithm, a lot of data. Still not AI. Okay, so, well, what the heck is AI then? Well, the opposite of artificial intelligence is natural intelligence, which is to say us, right? But what does that even mean? Uh, does that mean that... Um, is, is, is it, does artificial intelligence mean that like it acts like a human? Well, no, actually, because there was a very interesting study that was done where, I think it was like a text chat, uh, somebody did an experiment where they had this, basically a computer system, and it was engaging in a text chat with humans, and of all the humans who were interacting with it, some of them were actually, you know, typing back and forth across the screen, some of them were talking to a computer via text message, and some of them were talking to a real human. And the whole point of the experiment was to find out if people could tell that they were talking to a computer. And what they discovered is that uh, a large part of the time, people couldn't actually tell that they were talking to a computer. They thought they were talking to a human. That's actually very interesting because it kind of really makes you stop and think about, you know, you see you know, social media is all text and comments, right? So how can you actually be sure that the, this, this, this post or this person you're conversing with is actually a real human? Well, actually, today you can't be, which is, yeah, that's kind of a little bit disconcerting. Obviously, if it's someone you know in real life and they've got their photo up and you know it's their account, obviously it's them, but um, that's, uh, yeah, that's a little bit disconcerting. But again, that's not really AI because it's it's a it's a computer system that's it's kind of like a large database and it's it's a black box and it's kind of the same thing. It's like a machine learning algorithm, and once you've trained it, you know people are most likely to ask certain questions or make certain statements, and it learns over time what the optimal responses are to convince the other person that that it's talking to a human being and not a computer. But it's not necessarily intelligent as we would define it. It's not necessarily conscious. But anyway, that brings us to the question of what is AI, and is, does it mean that it's, is, you know, it's, it's not that it acts like a human because we've already got that, we know it's not like a sentient computer, right? Um, is it that it has, like, consciousness? Well, that's kind of a problem because different human beings define consciousness in a different way, and the bottom line is we don't actually know what consciousness is. I mean, nobody knows for sure, right? Or how about... AI would be like a robot with a soul. Awesome! Bob's your uncle, right? Well, what the heck does that mean? I mean, some people believe in souls, some people don't. Some pe Nobody knows what the heck it is. If it's, if it's even there, what, what does that mean? So, yeah, this is, this is kind of the problem because it's like, First of all, we can't even really define what natural intelligence is, which prevents us from actually defining what artificial intelligence is. And it's kind of like, is it AI? Is Skynet coming? Are we all going to die? Well, yeah, we kind of won't really know that until it happens. You know, the AI effect, the bar keeps getting raised higher and higher, and we keep developing these new technologies, and we keep going, no, that's not quite it. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. And furthermore, like, we don't even understand really what what makes us naturally intelligent. It's, it's like, it's very difficult to define. 
So, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, it's just, um, that's kind of the current state of technology as far as I and anyone else I can find knows. Um, so, yeah, nothing to do but just sit back and wait for Skynet to launch a bunch of missiles and Terminators to be marching all over the Earth, and when that happens, then you'll know AI is here. <laughs> so, that's it uh, for more Techie Tipsy, Scotty's Tech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.